So far we're about two minutes, about two minutes over what uh, what it should be, but you can see all this water building up down here on the on the beaker or on the stand plate. I sure wish that wouldn't have happened because I can consistently when I get these leaks stopped I can consistently run that within plus or minus about 20 seconds so uh, we're doing real good we're getting up to that line we're about uh, nine and a quarter milliliters right now so I'll be back okay we're 1640 I'm gonna stop it as soon as we get another drop or two in there you can see we're just approaching that 10 milliliter line. Uh, I need a couple of more drops and we'll stop it. Let's go for one more. I don't care if we go over a little bit. Okay, I'll give you one more drop. That's, there we go. Okay, so we're going to say 17, 17 uh, minutes, 13 seconds. And we are running at 54 milliamps. And a lot of my time was lost here because of the leak I have in my containment vessel. I'm going to try, I don't know if I had a, had a date on this thing or not because my battery went dead on the camera. And whenever you start it over, the date gets all skewed. But here's the numbers you want to run against Faraday's first law. Starts out at 66 uh, milliamps plus or minus 2 and ends up in this case that we just ran 54. But the run here is 58 plus or minus 2, which comes up to 311 milliamps averaged by five measurements is 0 0.62 or 62.2 milliamps. The time of this run was 13 minutes 51 seconds for a total of 831 seconds. The temperature in Kelvin was 296.25 and the pressure was 1.09 atm for a volume of 10 milliliters. So run those numbers and see what you come up with. Uh, you want to see a schematic of this guy? Alright, I'll show you one. No, there are no values there. But uh, you're experimenters, aren't you? Okay, here we go. You can see the beaker on the left-hand side. The two-coil system. I have removed... Well, there's no sense even discussing that because here's what I'm using. Uh, we have a ferrite in series with the plus lead to the one of the coils of the uh, beaker. And the other coil comes back to this two-coil arrangement with the diode here. These are L3s. This is an L2 here. And this is a standard configuration for a sec exciter. Except that you see there's a lot of missing parts from what are in a normal uh, 18X. So there's one capacitor left in there which bypasses the uh, plus rail to the L2 and the base resistor back to the negative. But you see that all of the positive potential is passing through the electrolyzer or through the cell and also we're getting increased productivity by this particular coil arrangement at the bottom which is uh, uh, an L3 and a capacitor. So there's the schematic. Pretty simple, isn't it?